In the previous module, Ed used the tree view tag helper. The focus of this next video is on partial views. To improve maintainability, we'll move sections of markup into partial view files. Those partial views will be rendered using the ASP.NET Core partial tag helper. In the home index view, there are four different sections of markup that we'd like to move out into partial views. To save some time, those partial views have been created already, and you'll see those in the views slash home directory. As a convention, each partial view file name is prefixed with an underscore, and this really just helps visually distinguish partial views from those full regular views. We could use an HTML helper to render each partial view, and in fact that's your only option in ASP.NET Core 2.0 and below. In ASP.NET Core 2.1 and later, the partial tag helper is available. And Visual Studio provides an analyzer to guide you. Suppose you're using an HTML helper to synchronously render the partial view. Uh, to pro provide an example of what we mean there, on line 13 here, let's assume we want to uh, synchronously render a partial view. And so I'll type at HTML dot partial. And then I will provide the name of the partial view without the file extension. So let's choose menu panel just as an example here. And what this line will do is it will actually uh, render the menu pan panel partial view that you see right here. I'll close that file. Save this. But notice this green squiggly under the HTML partial statement here. If you hover over that, pay close attention. There's actually a warning here that says use of ihtml.partial may result in application deadlocks. Consider using the partial tag helper or the asynchronous equivalent to this HTML helper, which is partial async. And so that's that's a hint to you that you know, there could be a better solution to this. Since this is a ASP.NET Core 2.1 application, we have access to uh, the partial tag helper. So let me actually delete this line. And it's actually lines 13 through 45 here. It's this entire div tag that we have already extracted out into a partial view, and that was that menu panel CSHTML file I showed you. So what I'd like to do is just uh, strip out that HTML, and I will add a partial uh, tag helper here to pull in that partial view to render the markup that was there previously. And we'll use the name attribute. The name attribute, again, you just use that to point at uh, the partial view. Menu panel is the name of that, so no file extension needed. Close that off. That's all that's needed to render that partial view. And if we move on further down in the file, we've got three other partial views we'd like to render. And down on line 36 is, is the next one. This is a simple image. It's a placeholder image for now. We want to use a partial view here as well, so uh, we'll use the partial tag helper, partial name, and the name of this is quarter to date sales chart. Again, no file extension needed. Copy that. Line 45, something very similar here. We want to pull in the monthly sales chart partial. And then for the final partial that we would like to render here, um, that's actually further down, starts on line 55. It's inside of this invoices comment. It's this entire table here. This is what we'd like to um, replace with a partial tag helper because this markup has been moved into um, a partial view, this invoices grid folder. This is where that table moved to. So if I strip this line out, partial name equals 
underscore invoices grid. Close that off, save the file. Now let's actually run this to make sure um, everything we've done here works. And the application should look exactly the same as it looked before. We've simply cleaned up this view so it's a bit more maintainable. Okay, so the application is pulled up and you see everything looks just as it did before. In the next module, we'll enhance the mobile capabilities of the application using the Responsive Panel Tag Helper.